body gets better Her body does get better, boy. I don't know if it could get much better. Beautiful. So beautiful, right? Al, uh, Wolf Alice, Wolf Alice, British band. Love these guys, man. Fucking love them. It's so intense, man. You set your morning off with meditation, a little music, things that that matter. Get out, got out yesterday for me. Got out into the real world. Met some Thai people down there. Had some good Thai food. Saw the folk festival. You know, you got to keep in touch with with reality. Exercise, eat right. So it's important in this life, man, because all this, all this YouTube shit just drag you down. <laughs> so let's talk about the news today. There's a lot of stuff going on. Uh, a lot of stuff going on. So look at, um, gonna look at some a couple of stories. We got the, the, there's a uh, Volfi Volfifi index by uh, Trump. There's a Volfifi index. Let me just let me just click through these. So fentanyl killing off, uh, killing a lot of people. The flood of fentanyl in from uh, China, and uh, we'll talk about Elizabeth Warren. Some of the fake polls that are going on again, p- propping her up. The upcoming debate and um, New Zealand, New Zealand back in the news, uh, censorship going wild over there. They're starting to arrest people for freedom of speech, and. Uh, a priest in the Philippines accused of raping a boy. Surprise, surprise. So let's start with a very interesting story. This is, this is crazy, right? This is crazy. I'm uh, on Wall Street, right? People will, not people, but brokers, you know, people that invest in the market, market makers, right? They, they look at certain uh, indicators, indexes, charts, graphs, research papers, but a lot of times they'll create an index, right, that follows, like, for example, the S&P 500 index or the Dow Jones Industrial Index, right? These are indexes. They're, they're basic averages of things that affect the market, right? So the average price of a stock is, is there's, there's a correlation between all stocks because they're all stocks and they're all affected by similar you know, market um, uh, influences. So, the, so, so anyway, indexes are created. But here, this is crazy. J.P. Morgan launches Volfifi Index <laughs> to track impact of Trump's tweets on market volatility. Now, this is J.P. Morgan Chase. Far, I don't know how many billions, hundreds of billions of dollars in market capitalization, creating a Volfifi Index. Remember, Cofifi. Remember when, when Trump misspelled coffee and he spelt it co fifi and then everybody said, Oh no, no, it wasn't it wasn't a mistake, it was a deep state plot, it's a coded word. Co fifi, don't you know co fifi? Right. So they fucking came up with this index. 
Sometime in the past three years, U.S. capital markets already rigged and broken beyond comprehension by central banks and HF, uh, HFTs crossed over into the realm of, of absurdity. But it wasn't until this Friday that we got official confirmation. <laughs> That's when J.P. Morgan came up with the Vofifi Index. Remember Covifi? To quantify Trump's impact on rate of, uh, of volatility. Now, this is not... This is very serious, actually, because markets are moved by emotion. Markets are moved by words. If someone releases a, a, a convincing uh, piece of research that says a, that a company is in good financial standing in the future, that company can benefit and the price can go up. If a war breaks out and a company that engages in war, uh, the building of you know, arms, like an arms deal or something, and a war breaks out, that's good for his stock. Right, the war, the industrial complex, uh, military industrial complex stocks uh, rate go up during war. So, if you have some information about war, and you happen to be the president of the United States, who has power of war, right, and you talk about war in a certain region, certain stocks that profit from the war, that sell arms and such, those those stocks will go up. The point is that Trump's words, his tweeting does have an effect on market. No doubt about it. He's the president of the United States. We still think of him as a, you know, a TV show jerk, but he is the president of the United States and is making decisions, especially in, in China and you know, anything that deals with Russia or anything, anything that, you know, anything that uh, involves executive order, Trump is involved in. So it comes time uh, when, it, when it comes to Trump's tweet, tweeting uh, habit, there are two approaches. One can ignore them, or as Asia is increasingly doing, or one can uh, obsess over them and use them as a springboard for volatility in the markets. Uh, so just briefly, they came up with this incredibly sophisticated um, sophisticated charts and graphs, right, about how, how so here, here's the gist of it, right? If Trump tweets more than 35 times in the course of a day, <laughs> the market will go down. <laughs> if, he, if he tweets less than five times a day, the market will go up 4%. A, a 0.04, 4%. So that's, in, that's insane. Right? Not, not, I'm sorry about the, the numbers, but just overall, that the more Trump tweets greater than 35 times a day, there's a, there's a chance that the market will go down. If he tweets less, it goes up. That's fucking insane, right? So there it is. The president has, proceed, uh, has produced more than 10,000 tweets since taking office. It's a legitimate index to look at. It's an in a legitimate thing to look at because we have a president that is, is tweeting directly to the public without the filter of uh, press secretary, without the filter of fake news, you, nobody, he's tweeting directly to the people. So it, it does have an effect, and it's, uh, I don't know, it's rather interesting. So what else we have? So in other news, China. China is using fentanyl as a chemical warfare against the U.S., experts say. That's pretty intense. So President Trump, recent, Trump's recent disappointment at China's lack of progress in stalling fentanyl exports to the U.S. increased Increasingly outspoken anti-China activist Kyle Bess is highlighting the potential return of opium wars as an international attack on Americans. Hmm, that's interesting. I mean, is the flow of if is the flow of fentanyl and drugs from outside of our perimeter a form of warfare or is it just profiteering? Uh, probably a little both, right? <clears throat> Here. We lost 2,977 lives uh, minus 19 hijackers in September 11 attacks. We now lose 50,000 people per year to opioid overdoses. <clears throat> well, you also tally in how many people get shot and killed, how many people die in jails. It's actually probably much higher than 50,000. People that are just, their lives are destroyed and they live out in, you know, in, in um, quiet desperation, addicted to opioids, addicted to alcohol or addicted to any substance, right? That's almost seven deaths per hour, every day, every year. 
China is responsible for 90% of fentanyl coming into our country. Really? So how do we, how, that's a great image, by the way. So how do we, how do we stop it? What's, what's the deal, right? What's the deal? Is it, is it uh, should we, how did, first of all, how, how does the fentanyl get in? Is it coming in up someone's ass on a plane? Is it coming in via boat? Right? First, you have to solve the problem of how it's getting in. Right? But, and if it is getting in, if it is coming in on, a, say, a commercial ship, right, who's getting paid off to cover for that? Right? So they, they allege that the fentanyl comes in through Mexico and then hits the southern border in various forms, through trucks or whatever, however it gets in. Right? <clears throat> so you gotta st- I mean, you've got to stop the flow of fentanyl or... And, and what, a, what a big aura this is going to be for some people, but why not legalize substances? Why not, why not make it where it's not so fucking mysterious? There's not this giant mystery surrounding these drugs. Fentanyl is very deadly. It's a very, it's a very high concentrated form of opiate that is, I believe, 30, 30%, um, 30 times more potent than heroin. So... Maybe we should look towards a legalization of some sort of opiates, like recreational, where you don't have to go to doctors and let them kill. It's just thought. I mean, because what we're doing right now isn't working. Uh, so is China responsible for 90% of the fentanyl into this country? Apparently, yes. Are they responsible? Is it a war? Is the headline real? China is using fentanyl as chemical warfare. Are we in an opium, opium war? Uh, I don't know, man. I don't like blaming the other side. I don't like blaming someone who someone who uses drugs. Is is let's look at our own deficit. Let's look at our own abject poverty in this country. Our own uh, social deprivation. Our own problems first, and why people will will decide to use opiates rather than go out on the path and jog. And eat good food. Why do they? Why do people lean into drugs? I think that's the better question. So, another story. So we got uh, Elizabeth Warren gains a new poll while Biden, Sanders, and Harris slide. Really? <laughs> so there seems to be a some kind of con- concerted effort to promote Elizabeth Warren to the front. Now, again, all the f- all the polls are fake. All the polls are fake. The polls. All of them, all 10 of them that the DNC follows are all corporate establishment hack polls, meaning that they present the candidate that the establishment would like to see win. And right now, it's not, it's not based on voting. It's, that is the illusion that is based on voting. And if you think I'm making that up, well, we already know that the Democratic primaries are rigged. Is that a lie? Is that, no, that is, that is factually correct based on DNC fraud lawsuit, based on a, 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 a pile of circumstantial evidence, like shutting down polling places, like purging voters off the rolls, right? All of these these things, oh, you know, straight up election fraud, where where the machines are most likely rigged, where the actual vote doesn't match the exit poll, it's off by 12, 15 percent. All signs of vote of uh, election fraud in our country, right? where Hillary Clinton beats Bernie Sanders, the favorite, by millions of votes, and we find out that millions of votes were counted in California. So all these things, we know that the election is rigged. The, Democratic, the Democrats rigged the primary. Their pick right now is Joe Biden. If Joe Biden fails, they will pick Elizabeth Warren to push into the, into the forefront. Now, why Elizabeth Warren? <clears throat> right? There's a, there's a, a phrase called a turncoat, right? You ever hear of a turncoat? You know what it is? A turncoat, remember, remember like back in the day, I, they may still have them, but they're reversible coats, right? So you're wearing your coat and it's black, right? And then you, you know, decide, oh, I, I want to wear the yellow side of my coat. So you take the coat off, you, you invert the coat, and then you put it on the other way. So you appeal in some other way to some other crowd because the crowd wasn't digging me in black, so I, I changed it to red or blue, whatever the inside is. So that's the expression of turncoat. And that's precisely what Elizabeth Warren is. Now, who is the favorite in this picture? Of course, it's Bernie Sanders. We know Bernie Sanders is the, you know, has a 70% approval rating in America. If, you know, the polls don't uh, reflect uh, any of his... Can any of his 
constituency, young people are not polled, you know, people in the middle, independents that are not registered Democrats are not polled, Republicans that voted for Trump because Hillary Clinton was so disgusting, a disgusting liar and a cheater, and they voted for Trump. Those people are not included. That would easily go back to Sanders if the two were pitted against each other, Trump and Sanders. In that scenario, Sanders wins. Any other candidate loses. But Biden cannot beat Trump, no way, and Elizabeth Warren. So, so is it true that Elizabeth Warren is gaining in the polls? Let's look at the polls. Let's look at the fake polls. So there's some new ones. September 8th, right? ABC. Biden, 29%. Sanders, 19%. Warren, 18%. Well, that doesn't seem to be a lead at all, right? It doesn't seem to be, where's, where's she gaining? They're, they're still one, two, and three in their fake poll. Uh, where else? September 5, there's a, a poll in Texas. Biden, 29. Um, Warren, 15. Sanders, 13. They got Beto O'Rourke at 18% in Texas. <laughs> And, and so on and so forth. So, again, there really is no evidence that Elizabeth Warren, that's just a mainstream media ploy right now. Uh, there is no evidence that Elizabeth Warren is gaining whatsoever. That's just something that they want. And it all leads up to this. This is very important because this is where the sheep will watch to see who, is, uh, who they're going to vote for, right? We're six months out from the first uh, election in February 2009, uh, 2020. Uh, so on September 12th, day after September 11th, three days from now, we're going to watch the Democratic uh, debate, and this one's hosted by none other than ABC and Univision and whatever. Right? Still 10 stooges on stage. So that is the, um, they're going to all jockey for position. Loving, loving Andrew, uh, Andrew Yang right now. Why is Amy Klobuchar even on the page? Why is Beto O'Rourke still on the page? What the fuck is Cory Booker still doing on the page? That is rigged. So, so here's a very good clip. I said that Elizabeth Warren is a turncoat. And now you'll see it in actuality. Now, this is the lovely reporter. Uh, uh, what's her name? I forget her name. Uh, Emma Vigland. Emma Vigland from TYT spells it out. Watch this. Brilliant stuff. Watch. Ask Senator Elizabeth Warren about her record when it comes to the military budget and foreign policy, which some from the left have criticized her on, I think, with, with legitimate cause. And uh, this was her answer. You uh, have focused a lot on progressive domestic policy. You also voted for a military budget increase in 2017. How does that square with your progressive politics when we're talking about foreign policy? If so... So she asks, I want you to hear it again before she, she answers. What she's saying is, Emma, Emma Viglin is asking Elizabeth Warren that you voted for increasing the military budget from $700 billion to $750 billion. You voted for increasing the military budget. That's the question. How does that square with your progressive politics when we're talking about foreign policy? If the question is, do I think we should cut the military budget, the answer is yes. So... So she just says, if the question is, should we reduce the military budget, the answer is yes. But you voted to increase the military budget. See, that's an example of the turncoat. Now watch the whole, watch the whole exchange again. Policy. You also voted for a military budget increase in 2017. How does that square with your progressive politics when we're talking about foreign policy? If the question is, do I think we should cut the military budget, the answer is yes. And I'm now on the Senate Armed Services Committee. I've had this fight over and over. But so anything she says after that is irrelevant, right? Am I, am I wrong to say that? Anything that she babbles is ridiculous because you had the chance as the senator from Massachusetts to vote it down, but you voted for it, and then you come out in public and say, oh, we should cut it. It makes no sense. That's the example of a turncoat. That's who Elizabeth Warren is. And um, I don't know. Why would I think people... The progressive people, the independent people see that. The majority of people see her as the turncoat. So she's wearing the coat one way when she is speaking to the public, and then she inverts the coat when she goes back to the Senate and votes another way. Right? Bad stuff, right? So here's another one. So U.S. Um, priest who gave out gifts in Philippines accused of abuse. Another priest. Right? Just a brief story, right? What are we going to do about all these priests, man? Raping boys. 
The fucking boy rapers. Right? It's horrible. All right. The American, uh, the American priest's voice echoed over the phone line. His sharp Midwestern accent softened over the decades by a gentle Filipino lit. Uh, on the other end, recording the call, was a young man battered by shame and but uh, anxious to get the priest to describe exactly what had happened in his little island village. I should have known better than trying to just say to have a life, the priest said. Happy days are gone. It's all over. Unquote. But the young man later told the Associate Press those days were happy only for the priest. There were years of misery for him, he said, and for the other boys who investigators said were sexually assaulted by Father Pus Hendricks, P I U S Hendricks. Dozens of boys, other boys. All right. So the boy was 14 years old. Hendrix is 78 years old. He's an old fucking man. Uh, and he's abusing, he's abusing boys as a priest, some as young as 14 years old. Uh, 12, excuse me. He was just 12, a new altar boy, a fucking altar boy. Right, so, the, so the kid comes to the church looking to, to find God and find, find you know, spirituality, and, and instead he finds a 78-year-old seven, a guy trying to stick his dick up his ass. Sick, sick fucks in this world. Right? This guy should—they should fucking peel him apart. Right? They should quarter him. You remember in the days where they, where they, they tie a, they tie a rope to each limb, your arms and your legs, and then they get four horses and they fucking quarter you. <laughs> That's what they should do to that guy. Right? So, Marx Conte reporting. Let's listen to some more. Oh, I love this shit. Oh, 